Hello, y'all. My name is Aubrey Burge. I'm known to my students as Miss Lauren, and today I'm going to talk about Leo Creo State Beach. Uh, actually, fun fact, my family vacations here every year, and I'll talk about that a little later. So I do know this beach personally, and it is my favorite, one of my favorite places to go camping. So let's go ahead and get started. Leo Carrillo is a public beach located in Malibu, California. You can visit for the day or you can stay in campsites, and these are the campsites right here, uh, that will nest that are nestled in the Santa Monica Mountains. So these are the Santa Monica Mountains. Um, this right here is PCH, US Highway 101, Pacific Coast Highway. Oh, I'm sorry, this is not the 101. Ha! This is a US Highway number one, I'm sorry. Uh, Californians call it PCH. Pacific Coast Highway. Sorry for that confusion. Hopefully that doesn't happen often throughout this video. Uh, so this park was named after actor and conservationist Leo Creo. That's his uh, picture right here. And look at that. It's signed. How cool is that? Uh, he was an actor, a conservationist, and he served on the California State Parks Commission. So he was part of the reason why this park exists today. The beach. Leo Creo State Park allows swimming and surfing water activities. During low tide, which is during this picture, this is very low tide right here, uh, you can see crabs, sea urchins, sea anemones, st starfish, and we've actually seen, I've seen, I've encountered a jellyfish once, it was dead, it was beached up on the shore, and uh, somebody else has uh, claimed to see a little tiny baby octopus, so yeah, it's pretty cool. So during low tide, what happens is the water collects in these little pools, tide pools and what you do is you lift up these rocks and you can find hermit crabs or hard-shelled crabs and all of these sea anemones and it's really really cool uh, this is the one picture I managed to snap from uh, last year last year is a, a vacation of this it was, it was a pretty big old crab actually like you can't really tell but that's a pretty decent sized crab that's probably about uh, the size of my palm so that's pretty cool um, this park also offers um, backcountry hiking trails. I'm not sure why it's specifically called backcountry, but every place it was described, it was described as backcountry. I've actually hiked one of these trails last summer, in fact, for the first time, and it was pretty cool. You start by the park entrance, as if you're entering um, on the road, entering uh, by car into the parking lot, and there's a dirt path that you can walk up. One of them is actually wheelchair accessible, although honestly it would be a little difficult to w push somebody up the path because yes, it's gradual, yes, it's flat and wide enough to accommodate a wheelchair, but that's a lot of upper body strength to be pushing somebody up. But nonetheless, it is wheelchair accessible. Uh, but that's not the one that we hiked up. We hiked up one of the trails that went up into the mountains. Can I go back to this first slide? So you start at about right here. Oh, hey, look at You can see that right there. Uh, one of the wheelchair accessible routes goes up here and it kind of backs up the camping sites. But another one goes way up here and you can actually get to the top of the, or the first peak of the mountain right here, uh, which you can't see because it's behind the picture. And we actually did that. It was really cool. I had some pictures, but I don't have them in the slide. Uh, I'm not sure why I don't have them in the slide, actually. But it was, it, it's pretty cool. Uh, another thing that the park offers that is open to the public, where my first ago, uh, these sea caves, you have to climb over a couple of rocks to get to them. But that's okay, because it's really cool. This is actually, it's not, it's not just a cave like because the cave is just hollowed out. This is actually a full tunnel that you can come in through one side and enter out the other side. It's not very long. It's probably like eh, maybe 20 feet long in total, but it, it, it's pretty cool. It's a pretty cool sight to see. So camping, like I said, my family goes camping here every year. Uh, we have to go, you have to go on Reserve America website to book your campsites and you have to book six months in advance. That's how that's how populated and popular this camp site is. So you go on Reserve America and you reserve your sites in January to go for July. And that's what my family does. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. The, there are about 130 campsites that accommodate campers, RVs, and or tents. Uh, my family personally, we tent it, or actually I personally tent it. My parents, uh, they bring my grandparents motorhome and my parents motorhome and I'm out in the tent in the dirt 
but it's awesome. Uh, big sycamore trees shade the campgrounds and the sites are walking distance from the beach, which is my favorite part. So these, this is the, so this is the actual, this is the parking lot, the daytime parking lot. This is where you enter off from PCH. And these are the little two lane roads that go in between all the campsites because a lot of times, especially if you end up camping way this far away, they will park in the daytime beach to drop people off so that you can uh, stay, spend the day at the beach and then drive all the way back to your campsite. And I have more information here. I lost my spot. There it is. There's also a camp store that is in the heart of the campground that sells snacks, souvenirs, and basic camp necessities. You know, like firewood, sticks, marshmallows, graham crackers, and chocolate. You know, basic camp necessities. <laughs> so, um, one nice thing about this campsite, the campsites, is that they are very flat. So, a lot of kids, they bring their bikes, their scooters, their skateboards, and you can find kids running around, not running around, riding around on bikes and skateboards and scooters and skates, and it, it happens all the time. It's, it's actually pretty awesome. That's what we do. We take our bikes, and I've got a mountain bike too, so it's really fun to ride the dirt trails. There's a trail right here that you can't see in this picture, but uh, it's, it's pretty cool. And this camp store right here is actually located, boop, right there and in fact that's probably it right there I don't know if you can see it but that's probably it um, so that's the camp store and then you just ride down to the beach and you ride your bike back up uh, sometimes we ride down to the beach at night and we'll just leave the bikes on the sand really quick and just look around at night and take pictures now that we all have cell phones uh, take pictures of the beautiful sunsets and everything so it's it's pretty cool as seen on TV so this is pretty cool Doubtless of wherever, whatever you watch, whatever you like to watch, there's no doubt, I'm pretty sure you have seen this beach sometime on TV, either the big screen or the little screen, because this beach is extremely popular for with photographers and filmmakers. Um, it's been on TV shows, it's been on commercials, it's been on movies, there's been a... a it's been photographed for ads and stuff, and the films there include Princess Diaries 2, Gidget, Grease, which I have a picture of right here, it's pretty cool, uh, 1984's The Karate Kid, Letters from Iwo Jima, The Craft, Point Break, The Usual Suspects, Inception, which is right here, man that movie gave me a headache, and Furious 7, and this one almost made me cry. <laughs> so Fast and Furious 7, uh, there's that last scene where they're all on the beach. Yup, that's Leo. That's that little guard tower and here's one of the little hiking trails you can, um, I wouldn't call it hiking, but you can walk from beach to beach because uh, I'll show you in a second they're uh, separated. Well, let's just go there right now. Oh, or maybe not. Uh, so the beaches are separated, but, um, well, yeah, this will work too. So this is a picture of what my family and I refer to as second beach. You uh, you climb over the rocks, and uh, you can see there's an there's. How do I describe this? This is a little hard to difficult to describe. I'm sorry. So there's there's these rocks that jet out, and they kind of come out like, like, I would guess like M's from the water. So you've got beaches that are separated by rocks, and you've got to climb over the rocks to get to the next beach, and then climb over the rocks again to get to the next beach. And uh, these are pictures that I took last, um, last summer. So here are all the tide pools. When the tide is all the way down, it's really cool. that I've, I have seen a couple times that the tide extends all the way down past this big old rock. Uh, this beach is very popular with surfers, so you can see a couple of surfers there. And, uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. And then the tide does come all the way back up to uh, cover up all the rocks, which is also really cool. So, yes, we do still swim in this water with all these rocks. You kind of have to be careful, and we normally have water shoes or water socks or whatever you call them. Uh, this is really cool. This is a, um, just down further, again, where the tides were down. Oh, and that, that's the end of my slideshow. So what I'm going to show you is, like I talked about a little earlier... Google Maps, so as you can see, you have to climb over the rocks to get to the next beach. So I got a funny story to tell you. 
uh, it'll be funny for y'all, but it wasn't funny for me at the time. Actually, I did think it was funny at the time now that I think about it. So basically, we, a couple of my friends and I, we were climbing over these rocks. I think it was these rocks right here to get to this beach because this is the main second beach. And this is kind of like a little half beach. There's a teeny tiny little cave, right? Oh, no, the cave is right here, and that's a cave cave. And that's kind of a tunnel because it does come out this way too, but it does go a little deeper into there. It's a very low roof, it's a very shallow cave. So, And you can only ever go inside of it when it's very low tide because it's, it's not tall at all. You're going to get squished, and it's not going to be fun. But regardless, so my friends and I, we crawled over this way and decided we're going to go to Second Beach. But instead of going up this dirt path, we were already wet from swimming, we decided to swim around. So what we did was we... We jumped over, not jumped over, you, you do have to climb over these rocks. So we climbed over these rocks right here, we walked across the beach, and we got over to these rocks, and we climbed over these rocks, and it was, the tide was, it was climbing. So we were trying to get over it on this side without getting smushed by the rocks. So one of my first friend went, went, no problem. My second friend went, no problem. So I go, and I try to time it so that I don't get hit by the waves, and I saw the wave coming, and I was like, aw, crud. So I grabbed onto the rocks and held on as hard as I can, but it didn't work. The wave came, it crashed onto me, brought me out just a little bit, and then I rode it into safety onto the beach, and uh, yeah, I got kind of scraped up. I got scraped up on one of my legs all the way it was on one side and it was all the way from my ankle up to where my swimsuit was and it didn't hurt that bad but it was kind of good that we were swimming in the ocean because you know the salt water kills the bacteria and so I was just like eh, keep swimming it started to burn a little later and then when I had to put on sunblock the next day that hurt but other than that it really wasn't that bad and it was a funny story to tell later on and I was wearing those scars pretty proud but that's my presentation on Leo Carrillo State Beach. I hope you enjoyed this. I actually kind of like this. I'm probably going to do something similar to this, especially when I'm absent and I still need to deliver a lesson for my students. I am definitely going to do something like this. I, I really like this. Oh, and point of fact for y'all high schoolers, your college professors, they usually end up doing something similar to this, except your college professor will stand behind a green screen so they'll have a podium or at least my college professors for their online classes they had a they had a podium that said the UT Tyler emblem on it and then they were pacing around and pacing around and you can see the presentation in the background because they were standing in front of a giant green screen so they just projected it their PowerPoint behind them which was pretty cool if I could do that that would be awesome but yes I hope you enjoyed this little teeny tiny baby pathetic lecture I looked for some history on how the park came to be and I honestly could not find anything I looked and looked and I couldn't find anything the only information I found uh, about the park is what you see here and what I told you from my personal experience so that's all I have thank y'all for watching and I hope y'all have a good day join me later